and he was my teacher in triple E, the equivalent of triple E 35 and triple E Three, yes. I remember I used to draw his face. And I used to throw darts at his face. Because his class is really difficult. I remember one time, we were supposed to have an exam for electromagnetics. And uh, back to back with the exam for triple D35. So, parang ano siya eh. 1.30, 1 o'clock to 2.30 yung una, tapos 2.30 to 3, 4 o'clock. Grabe, no? Tapos, ano po, dinagdun na kami sa theater, hindi na namin yung professors namin, hindi dumating. Dito ang tuwa kami, walang exam. Alam nyo, nasa yung dalawang professor? The Lord of God is my, the movie. This is a true story. I don't know if he could say yes or no. Tatlong exam ba yun? Pati 7 pa doon? Meron yung mga exams namin noon. Sabay-sabay, magkakasunod, hindi kami umaakaw. Sabay namin. I also would like to acknowledge the presence of the Director of the Institute, Dr. Richard Dizon. The faculty members of the lab. And of course, my colleague at ESP, Dr. Randy Cajote, and the president of the UP Engineering Research and Development Foundation Corporation on Engineering Studies. So, my talk today is about the role of UP people in the Philippine innovation ecosystem. My talk consists of three parts. I'll give you a historical background about people. May kaya kung magsabi niyan kasi ako na yung third oldest faculty member na yun. Mas matanda na lang sa akin si Prof. Escoto, tapos si Prof. Nervis. So, tanda yun sa akin. Tapos ako na yung susunod. So, I can talk about the history of the UP Philippines. And then, I would like to talk about the Philippine innovation ecosystem from the point of view of the Department of Science and Technology. Because after all, the DOS is the national government agency in charge of science and technology. And then, <clears throat> since mga bata pa kayo, I'd like to talk about the current and future role of UPEEI in the Philippine innovation ecosystem. So, let's talk about some UPEEI people. <laughs> Some faces look familiar, eh? Some faces are not familiar. Uh, so, first of all, you have to know the mission of the Institute to produce excellent, innovative, and nationalistic engineers. Ulitin nga natin sabay-sabay. To produce excellent, Are you innovative? Yes. Are you excellent? By the time you finish, yes. Are you nationalistic? Marami mga definition siya nationalistic. But I will show you what nationalistic means by example. And then the department or the institute has three roles. Teaching, research, and extension. Yung teaching sa research siguro alam nyo na kung ano ano? Yes? Natutukun na kung kaso mga sa classic teachers, ano? Natutukun naman kayo, ano? Yes? Okay. And then the clear research kayo pagka 5th year or 6th year or 7th year na kayo, ano? Through the labs. And then, extension. This is something that you may not be familiar with. Extension is for the institute to extend its expertise beyond the institute. For example, that is problem yung ano, yung uh, utilities ng university. Ang mahal na binabaya ng kuryente at saka ng tubig at saka ng telepono. So sila Prof. Solis nun, pinag-uos sila ng Utilities Management Committee para ma-manage yung utilities ng university. 
Pero siyempre si Prof. Solis hindi ang papayag na walang makalit. Sabi niya ganito, 10% ng matitipid ng university ibalik sa Tripoli. So, kaya daming bagong gamit ng Tripoli noong time na yun. Dahil, we were extending our services and at the same time, we are benefiting from the savings that the university had. Another form of extension, uh, for example, one of our former chairs, the Dr. Viray, in the beginning, they were helping NAPOCOR, the National Power Corporation, in their power systems analysis. In the end, he became the secretary of the Department of Energy. So that's extension work. Another example, uh, Professor Alaridia. Uh, he recently retired, and she uh, actually yung nagumpisa ng UP Community Center. Kaya nag-e-enjoy kayo ng CRS, uh, all the uh, computing facilities that we have in the university, it began with the UP Community Center. Dr. Lumi Alaridia was one of the directors of that center. Then Prof. Solis, <clears throat> he became the ASI director as mentioned by uh, but I would like to talk to you about what he is doing as a teacher now. He has a school called the Tansa Child Development Center in Cavite. This is what is unique about that school. Meron silang robotics, uh, I won't call it a competition, but some, some of the grades have competition. The others, they just demonstrate. Pero believe ka, ang may project ng robotics, magula grade one hanggang grade 6. So can you imagine grade 1 ko pala nag-aaral ka ng program? Grade 2 ka pala nakakapag-program ka ng kanya. So that's the kind of teacher that uh, Professor Sobis is. And then, uh, Professor Chicho Mantari, hopefully babalik na next year. Huh? He is currently with the IMI, and he was also a chairman of the Triple E. Then Dr. Taiko, grabbing extension ang ginawa niya kasi at that time he was the vice chancellor for uh, administration and there were many things in the university that were corrected during this time. At that time because he was using engineering methods. And then, kilala niya pa, no? Yes. Kilala niya rin pa, no? Hindi yes. okay. lang silang dalawa eh kasama dun sa 50 outstanding scientists of POSD in 50 years old. Yun sila kagaday. So at that time, they were working on several projects that were actually addressing needs for education and for information technology. This is beyond being part of the world. And then, do you know uh, Professor Mato? Sino ta na Microlab dito? Microlab. He was actually the founder of Microlab. In 1987, he went on an Australian grant to uh, Australia. And then, Luis uh, is He's in charge of the Technology Transfer Business Development Office of UP system. Atong mga ginagawa ninyo, the intellectual property belongs to the university. If the university wants to transfer the technology, it is his office that is actually Tapos, kilala niyo mga si Richard Gisson sa kasi alar ko na, no? Sila dalawa naman, they actually started uh, the microelectronics graduate program na ini-involve yung iba-ibang universities. Hindi lang UP. They started including Ateneo, De La Salle, Papua, University of San Carlos, Mindanao State University, para para ganapin talaga yung microelectronics education. And then, si Rafi Kohote, if you have seen that software program called Learning English Application for Pinoys, he was the program leader of that particular project. It's a 200 hour software training program for English. Now, why am I talking about these people? By the way, wala sa picture na ito na chairman si Ruel Ocampo. He was the chairman after him. And then wala din dito sa picture si Dr. Abaya. He is with the United Nations Comprehensive Ban of Nuclear Testing. Okay, ginagawa nila. They have sensors all over the world. 
of the continent of the contestant nuclear, they are the ones who actually determine where the testing is happening and the United Nations will go there. So, having said that, you have to understand where you are supposed to be located as engineers in the future. We have a development framework for the country. Ang problema naman ang bansa natin, poor daw tayo. Tapos, ang technology hindi ganun talaga. So, this is what the National Economic Development Authority has already figured out. You need science, technology, and innovation to boost competitiveness to guarantee rapid and sustained growth. Ibig sabihin, pag naging engineer na kayo, yan yung gagawin ninyo para sa bansa. At po-contribute kayo sa rapid and sustained growth. Naintindihan niyo ba ko yung isip na economic development? Yes? Or no? Okay, pag sinabi na nag-improve by 7% ang growth ng Philippines, ano ibig sabihin niyo? Does it translate na mag-increase ng 7% ang sweat mo? Necessarily. May pa-compute sila niyan. But, it is reflected in the overall living experience of the people. Iba dito sa Pilipinas, kahit yung mga kasambahay natin may cellphone, may pang-load sila ng cellphone nila, di ba? So that is an example of growth that is going all over the country. Now let me talk a little bit about the Department of Science and Technology. We have a leader, a secretary, and then we have three main branches. We have research and development. Nandito yung mga research and development institutes. Si Joel Marciano is the new director of the Advanced Science Technology Institute across City Garcia. That is one of our research institutes. Then the others are located in the So we have textile, we have uh, industrial technology, we have uh, uh, forest products, we also have metals, and so on. And then we have scientific and technological services of PIVOX, PAGASA, Philippine Science High School, the Simo Scholar Dito na DOSD. Blanks DOSD Scholar Dito. You may start. Ano yung iba? Una yung scholar, DOSD SDI scholars. Ayun yung mayroon. Okay. The scholarships are part of the SFD services. And then we have regional operations. We have 16 regional offices all over the country. Na sila yung sumatumitingin ko yung problema doon sa kanilang sariling region, and then try to give it SMP intervention. So then ito yung path na pwede niyong patungguhan. You can do R&D, and then either the SMP services will deploy the technology or the regional operations to deploy the technology. So I'll show you some examples later. Recently, DOSD launched the Harmonized National SMP Agenda 2016 to 2025. Napaka-simple lang no agenda. Two parts. Poverty alleviation and inclusive growth. And then climate change mitigation and adaptation and disaster risk reduction. Those are the two biggest problems of the country. Now, where do you figure in? Nandito kayo, competitive industries and countryside development. So for some of you who decide to go back to their hometown, you will be able to contribute to countryside development. And then for some of you who will go into the electronics and conductor industry, power industry, and so on, people may want to contribute to competitive industries. So you want to eat it in the engineers. OK. Alam nyo naman na sa Asia, number two tayo in terms of the price of electricity. Ang lamas mataas lang sa atin ay Japan. How can we become competitive when potential investors natatakot yung sa presyo ng kuryente natin? Ayaw na lang at tayo dito. So this is something that the power people are supposed to solve. By example kanina si Dr. Biray, he became the DOE secretary during the power crisis of the 90s. Hindi nyo kasi na-experience ko, pero ganito. We only had electricity four hours a day in the labs. 
Kung masisimulate ka, gagawin mo, dagdagan na talaga ng code mo para i-force others, tapos na simulation. Otherwise, hindi mo matatapos yung simulation mo. Pero ka pinagaling mo ng program mo. Kasi kaya nga, unlimited time, di ba? Pero noon, ganun ang problema namin. And then, you can also figure out, figure here, no? I will show you later how that is here. So, what enables innovation to develop and privilege? Based on our observations, there are three things that you need to create an SMB-based innovation ecosystem. Number one, you need to have the facilities. Ano yung sabihin ko facilities na yun? Dito sa Triple E, ang damo nga ng laboratories nyo, di ba? Dami niyong facilities, right? When you compare what we have in our labs, mas maganda pa siya kesa dun sa engineering school na napakamahal ng vision team. Tama? Madami kayo makikita dito sa mga labs ninyo na hindi mo makikita dun sa school na ang tuition fee ay 200,000 a year. What a privilege, di ba? Okay. Now, when I talk about facilities, I talk about more what we call shared service facilities. Hindi naman kaya ng Pilipinas na mag-invest ng sampung facilities sa may sabay. Kaisa-isa lang yung kaya. Kaya shared siya, people will have to go there and then use the facilities. I'll show you some facilities that are available in the wild. Then know how. You know, the Filipinos are very creative. All you have to do is give them the opportunity and they're able to deliver. I'll show some examples also of that matter. And then programs. In the past, EOSD receives proposals and then we approve the proposals for research and development. Pero ngayon, iba na. We tell the people, these are the things that we want done. Pag hindi kasama dyan yung gusto mong gawin, you will not get funding from the OST. So, programmatic yung approach. We also had a paradigm shift towards technological self-reliance. This word, technological self-reliance, is embodied in the 1987 Constitution. Supposedly, kailangan natin ng mga R&D na hindi academic lang ang of good. Kailangan magbe-benefit talaga yung mga Pilipino. So, for example, nakita niyo yung automated library transit dyan, di ba? Nasa pagpasok ko ng UP. And then, nakita niyo rin yung Philippine Genome Center dyan sa Institute of Biology. Pagkuta na ba kayo doon? Before $1,000, you can get your DNA profile para alam mo na hindi mo hindi sakit mo pagtanda mo. And then we have electronic devices and sensors all over the country. I'll explain that in a while. Then you're probably familiar with the water. So, in order to do technological self-sufficiency, we have to identify technologies that are critical and strategic. Ibig sabihin, marami pang ibang technologies pero hindi na kami mag-i-invest doon. Itong sampo lang ang i-invest na namin. So advanced drive technologies, remote sensing, genomics, biotech, nanotech, ICT, advanced mapping, metrology, data analytics, and advanced manufacturing. Most of these things actually need the expertise of triple E people. I will show some examples. Now, in order to pursue these critical strategic technologies, we have to establish SMP infrastructure. It is in a sabiguna, but isa isa lang yung investment natin. So we have the LiDAR data processing facilities. This is light detection and ranging. Pero tayong apat na aeroplano na wander all over the country gathering topographical data that is very detailed. And then ina-analyze siya dito sa National Engineering Center ng mga tanak genetic engineering department. Ang maganda lang, and this we are very proud of uh, GE, Nag-umpisa sila, sampung lang silang engineers na marunong. And then, they expanded the GE group into 70 people. 70 engineers, computer scientists, and scientists. And then, tinuruan nila labing apat na ibang universities. Like, for example, Ateneo de San Juanga, University of San Carlos in Cebu, Mindanao State University in Liga, etc. So now, there are 400 such people who know how to process 
How can I have the lighter data? You want to be able to model the flow of water from rainfall into flood or into waterways. If you do that, we can improve the way that we use water. Most people think of rainwater as flood. This group are now able to predict the flood levels in streets of Metro Manila. But then, we should also think about water as irrigation for our agriculture. Did you know that of the rainfall that we get in the country each year, we only use 6% for agriculture and for water uses in the house? Countries like Japan, they are able to use 12 to 15% of their water. They are productive, Sina. Can we want to import the entire country that we have from Thailand and Vietnam because they are able to finance their water resources? Another example is the Philippine Genome Center, Nanotech, etc. This one is important to you. It's a conducted the Project Design Center. This actually here in the digital report, the PIIC, the Philippine Institute for Integrated Circuit. This is led by uh, Dr. Gison and Dr. Mark Rosales. And then you have advanced manufacturing facilities, testing and metrology. And then we have high performance computing facilities. The National Computing Center, we're not in building though. The Lubinium Supercomputer natin, which is equivalent to 4,000 uh, CPUs. And that's where they are able to do modeling for weather, modeling for DNA, and so on. And then we have food innovation centers, remote sensing, drug discovery, and environmental control facilities. Now, how do you use all of these things? Let me give an example. So, Mary, we still improve in agricultural productivity. When you talk about productivity, either input goes down or output goes up. Hindi na kakalit yung kanilang side. So, you use genomics to get improved variety. You use biotechnology so that you can produce more fertilizer. And then you mechanize. Then, ano may nuclear techniques? Nalaman ko dun sa Philippine Nuclear Research Institute. Pag inirajate mo pala yung kunyari taragina, which comes from seeds, it will break down the chemical into smaller molecules. Dahil maliit yung molecules nila, mas nakakapasok sila sa halaman. Kaya yung halaman mo, mas maganda ang tubo. Tapos mas konti yung bukuna sa soil na makakasira sa soil nila. And then we have sensors. This is where you have it. Triple E, people, people, I need it for making sensors, making them communicate with each other, analyzing the inputs, the outputs of the sensors, then light and mapping, remote sensing, air specific forecast, and ICT and position of the project. This is all an example. This one finished the whole project of the sugar cane variety. First, they created a variety that has higher foundation. Yung dati, 60 metric tons of cane per hectare. Ngayon ang akagawa na sila ng variety na 85 metric tons cane per hectare. That's a 41% increase. And then, yung sucrose, yun ang pagproduce sa sugar, na-improve din nila by 67%. Tapos resistant to smog, resistant to mildew. It used to take 8 to 10 years to do this. But because you use genomics, and to improve the sugar cane variety, three to five years na lang, tapos na siya. Now, what does this translate to? 1.41 times 1.67 is about 2.3. So that's a 130% increase in your output. Now, papalitan mo lang yung variety ng yung sugar cane. So this is the power of technology. Pareho pa rin yung cultural practices ng mga farmers, pero yung yield, 135% higher. Ito, technology self-reliance on flood early warning systems. Before, we were reliant on foreign technology. From 1972 to 2011, we spent 2.4 billion, and we were able to put sensors in five major river systems and 18 minor river systems. That's about 197 sensors. 
from 2011 to 2015, just five years, spending about 1.7 billion. Pero na tayong sensors, ito pa dati na. Tapos, ito pa yung presyo nila. Yung imported is 880,000, yung local is 235,000. Yung imported na ARG, automated rate gauge, 280,000, yung lower na as 95,000. Pag pumunta ka doon sa website ng NOAA, makikita mo actually yung readings ng mga sensors na yan. It's using simple cellular technology. And pag nawasak yung cellular technology pag bumaglo, it uses satellite communications. But the point is, these are made by Philippine engineers. In fact, the former director of ASTI, Engineer Dennis Villuente, is an alumnus. It was during this time that ASTI made these uh, sensors. Next, sustainable mass transport systems. Siguro naman, nararamdaman nyo ito for those who are community na traffic, traffic na talaga sa community na. So, we did simulations if we use the road train, this one. Imagine mo ito, imagine mo ang EDSA. Paalisin mo yung isang, isang lane dedicated to this road train. This is what this road train can do. Every 24 seconds, you need the shaft. Every one kilometer on station. You will go from Kaloopan Monumento to Mall of Asia in less than an hour. You know what I'm doing. But it has to be an entire system. Hindi pwede isang road train na nagilagay natin doon sa EDSA. Kailangan tanggalin mo lahat ng bus. So when you compute it, there are currently 3,500 buses along EDSA. Every day, ah, 3,500. And they are ferrying 680,000 people every day. When we computed using the road train, we are only going to need 287 road trains. Very efficient compared to the 3,500. That was like hybrid electric road train network. Mabuti pa siya sa environment. And guess what? The program leader of this mass transport program is engineer Robert Bison, an alumnus of the digital Next, government services. Narinig nyo na yung Wi-Fi sa barangay. Have you heard of this? There are places in the country, what we call the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth pass municipalities. Ito yung mahirap talaga yung mga tao, so they don't have access to the internet. And this is true for about 65% of the population of the country. So sabi ng DOSD, pag nagayin na tayo ng different Wi-Fi, let's put it in public places. So we put it in schools, we put it in yung mga plaza, yung mga, kung nasan yung mga barangay rural health unit, and so on. And this is the game changer. DOSD is actually using TV white space. Diba, konti lang ang channels ng TV natin. So you have white space in the TV channels. And you can actually use that for Wi-Fi. And if you do that, then you can deliver Wi-Fi to the most remote areas in the country. Even if you are not you at the smart, the blue, the BLDT, the BioNTel, etc. I don't know what you say. Well, economic returns for them. But then, because we are a public institution, we are putting this up. But we're using this kind of technology, because we know it is very important. And guess what? The executive director of the Information and Communications Technology Office, ICTO, is a undersecretary, Louis Casandre, also an alumnus of UK Poly. And this one, an industrial gate biomedical diagnostic device. You know, in ASEAN, nangunguna tayo sa e-health or telehealth. This one is a response to a problem. Did you know that 7 out of 10 Filipinos never see a doctor in their lifetime? 7 out of 10. So sabi namin, bakit? Eh kasi walang doctor dun sa mga barangay. So this industrial grade biomedical diagnostic device uses cellular phone technology. So, ikakabit nung nurse 
from Barangay Rural Health Worker is a patient. And then the data will be transmitted to a doctor in a big hospital. And then they can render diagnosis. Alam niyo ba sino may gawa ng RX box? Mga studyante at faculty members ng UD Tripoli. Nasaan stage na kami yun? We have already deployed 140 pilot uh, devices all over the country. And the results were really fantastic. We heard ng mga kwento na alam mo, minsan pinapanood namin yung mga testimonial ng mga nasa probinsya. You would never imagine that it would happen. Kaya meron isa, may mga kanap na ali. Tapos yung midwife, hindi niya ma-figure out what is going on. So kinabi ko nila nito, it has a fetal heart monitor. So nalalaman nila, pag pinupush mo yung tiyan ng mami, bumabagal yung heart ng baby. So they can figure out paano iikot yung baby para mailalas mo sa ito. And guess what? Buka yung nanay at buka yung baby. So there are stories like this where you use a device made by students and faculty members. But Shepard, we will be getting from network. So this time, we are manufacturing 1,000 of these. And a company, a Filipino local company, is actually going to be the one to manufacture the 1,000 devices. And we, our plan is to put 40,000 of these all over the country. Of course, now na nasa clinical testing na siya, we turn it over to UP Manila, to the doctors. And aside from that information, meron kang telehealth device, meron kang TV white space, data centers ka, and other electronic medical devices, then you can actually come up with an e-health program. For the You're familiar with this, Microsat. It's a 50 kilogram microsatellite with these dimensions, 550 by 550 by 350. It was already launched to the ISS last March. And then this April 27, an astronaut will release it to the orbit. And in a few weeks, we will actually get images from the microsatellite. This is the first Microsoft And the program leader is Dr. John Marciano. In fact, meron itatayo dyan, alam nyo ba yan? Itatayo dyan na third floor ba? No, first, second floor and then fourth floor, no? Which is going to be the National Microsatellite Laboratory. So it's going to be the Triple E. Ano bang meron dyan? Well, there are sensors. And we are hoping that our students, faculty members, and researchers will be able to create sensors for microsatellites. And also, we expect that we have communications laboratories here, both the Computer Networks Lab and the WCEL. They can contribute the communications for uh, the microsatellite. And for the others, you know, this is a 2010 global value chain. I tried to look for the latest one. There are a new references. This is a global value chain for the semiconductor in the late 2016s. It's a 1.59 trillion US dollar industry. Of course, ito yung mga price per type of activity. And the Philippines are in the time mail, worth 313.8 billion portion. Compared to the other activities, this is 1.2 trillion. So, what are we doing about this? Well, we put up three facilities. The Ad Hotel, Advanced Device Materials Testing Lab, the EPDC, this Electronics Product Development Center, and the TIIC, the Philippine Institute of Integrated Circuits. And this is the plan. Because of having these facilities, we believe that Filipino engineers will now be able to go from this value chain to this bigger value chain. Okay, come on. And on EPDC, ang laman niya, meron siyang electromagnetic compatibility testing facility. Di ba pagka may bago ang gadget, may makikita ka FCC warning, blah, 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 to make sure that it does not interfere with other signals. And you can actually test 
yung new products in this facility. Tapos yung ad na naman, if you have microelectronic devices, you can actually use the equipment in ad model to determine if there are physical or failure analysis needed for the devices. And then the PIIC is for design guys. In the value chain for semiconductor electronics, the Philippines, for 30 years, we have stayed in manufacturing and assembly. We need to move up the value chain. We need to go to design. And we need to do value chain. So, we have a product na $100 ang cost. The manufacturing and assembly don $10 ang kita. But if you go for design, $40 ang kita. That's where we would like to go. Now, this was a an advertisement of General Motors in 2014. LTE 4G, faster mobile data, enhanced safety, and the real time streaming video in the back seat. In fact, today we don't talk about Wi Fi hotspot, we talk about the Internet of Things. Sino sa ang isa lang ang cellphone residents? Sino sa inyo ang main device na nakipag-communicate with your cell phone? For example, I have here a Fitbit communicates with my cell phone. Sino sa inyo may ganyan? Okay. Ang point to is that soon, Everything will be connected. And you will have the internet of things. And you are very lucky because you will be the ones to design and build these new gadgets and devices that will use the internet of things. May mga nakita na kami nag-uisa ng ganito sa ibang bansa. So, for example, meron yung isa. Pag sinunod mo yung nangyari ang mga daw para sa mga athletes. So, sinunod mo yung damit. Tapos yung damit nila, kaya niya magkaroon ng LED lighting, baka mahina yung ila para hindi ka masasaan. Tapos kaya niya i-measure yung bodily, ano mo, uh, ano yung temperature mo, ano yung blood pressure mo, ano yung sweat, amount of sweat na napoproduce mo, etc. And then it communicates via internet to a device so that mo-monitor ka ng coach mo. So these are things that are already happening now, and when you graduate, you will be able to participate in this. Now why do I show you this? Because of this very old slide. These are IT-enabled services versus real information technology. Let me show you three companies. This is People's Report. This is a call center. And then you have Silicon RF. This is actually creating a semiconductor electronics, and then you have Google. But you think that the amount of money that they raised was 75 million, 79 million, 440 million. Pino ang mura yung Google. Pero, tingnan mo ngayon yung kanilang revenue per quarter. 31 million, 74 million, 3.2 billion. Okay, why do I show you this? Because you belong to a different kind of economy. Your generation is going to hit this kind of economy. Hindi na pwede yung masyado intensive sa labor. Hindi na kasi labor ang market na yun. Okay din ito kasi this one is more of a electronics, the design, etc. But this one, this is very innovative. Your generation is the one that needs to be very innovative because you have problems that we did not have before. No matter how many people from Solis, wala ni isang kwarto sa engineering na telephone. Kasi malamit ang kulima. Pero ngayon kayo, hindi nyo na kayo magpasin mo lang telephone. Hindi ba nga init? Because you have climate change. By the time you hit my age, baka mas mahal na ang isang litro ng tubig kesa sa pagkain. 
these are things that are going to be real for you. Think of here, then you know, you know, we rely heavily on, well, only 40% is uh, renewable for the communities, the others are not, not renewable. When it gets to your time, of meron na kayong mga anak, saka mga apo, that number will have to change. And it is dependent upon you to make innovations that will actually make them happen. Currently, most innovations in the technology business incubators in the country happen in the IT domain. Pero sa inyo, di ba? Sino sa inyo ang tanawang cell? Double cell. Raise your hands. <laughs> Sino ang taga computer network club or whatever the new name is? May name niya ngayon, hindi ko na alam eh. But in the end, 
these are just stepping stones towards you getting your degree. It is after you get your degree that the game really starts. Do you figure out whether you are going to be a useful, contributing Filipino or not? And I've shown you several examples of people who have helped the country. And we hope that you also do the same. Kayong di ba yung tinatawag na millennials? Tama ba? Yung age ay less than 35? Hindi ka kasama doon. Parel ka na, di ba? But the millennials, iba kasi yung karakteristik nyo eh. Why do you want to have read? The millennials, the value system is very different. Hindi kang parang mga mas matatanda na very self-sacrificing. Yung they would stay in the country and serve. Tapos meron din yung mga, sabi nila yung mga millennials, feelings and titles. These are what I've read, ano? And title means that feeling nila, ah, dapat gawin nyo to sa akin. Gawin nyo ko nito. Rather than thinking, what can we do for you? Tama kayo yung parts ninyo you will start thinking anti-millennials. I know that you were born in this age, but I know that you are bright enough, you are talented enough to become anti-millennial in terms of your body system. So, this is my challenge to you. 20 years from now, when I look at you, what will I see? Will I still see you in the country? One. Will I see you practicing engineering, triple E? Yes. Two. Number three, are you doing something relevant for the country? Dito sa UP, sabi nila, and you can check this with the numbers, ang pinakamahal ang tuition fee ay ang triple E. Pinakamahal, ha? Alam ko, binabayad ng pinakamahal na tuition fee, 26. We're not talking about the 26,000. We're talking about the actual amount that is being spent on you by the government. Do you know how much that is? Pag nag-graduate kayo, it's more than 1 million. Five years ago, we spent about 100,000 or about 300,000 per student per year. All people is students. Hindi alam mo yun, no? Feeling and title na pa kayo? Yes? Okay, the reason I'm giving this number is that so much is given, so much more is expected. So I hope that in the end, when we see you 20 years, 30 years down the road, pag tinanong ko sa'yo, ano ba nabigay mo sa Pilipinas? Ano ba kong ito? Sana meron ka nung maganda sa iyo. Paasahan ko ba kayo doon? Yes? Yes. Yes? O meron din itong yes doon, wala? Yes. Paasahan ko. Okay, you got it. Ano po yung take nyo on the 
uh, yung business area ko sa mga liwata engineers. Kasi medyo malabo talaga eh, yung story. So, gusto mo na po, ano yung mga business area? Part. Ito lang kasi po yung sagot ko sa inyo. And it will require some work on your part. What you heard is two engineers. There are nine engineers. You can listen to what the seven other engineers say before you think about what the two have said. And by the way, uh, when I was talking to you, because you are the millennials, you, they also belong to your group. But somehow, seven out of the nine were anti-millennial in the way they were thinking. So I hope I answered your question. I don't know. I'll start. So, other questions? No, we didn't test you. Other questions? On the right or side? Any questions? Did you read it? Who's that? Who's that? Do you see scholar? TDP, my question. Alam nyo, kung nandito kayo nung APEC, di ba may vacation na isang linggo, siguro nag-uwi at kayo na ito. If you were in Metro Manila, bibilib ka talaga sa internet speed. Nakita namin na kaya naman pala yung ganyang kabilis. So the bottom line, the answer is that we actually have the capacity. Kasi bilangin mo ilan ng call center companies sa bansa. Kung wala yung capacity for such fast internet connections, we will not have all of these uh, locators in the country. So what is the answer? A simple things, like for example, did you know that when you send an email to your classmate here in the Philippines, pupunta mo na yun sa exchange like this, tas nababalik. Imagine the amount of traffic that you are contributing to the internet when that happens. So it's a BOST. When we told the internet service providers, mag-bid na kayo dito sa Wi-Fi sa barangay, pero may requirement ng BOST. Kailangan may local exchange. Yung lang paglalagay ng local exchange, bibilis kagad yung service sa'yo. Kasi, hindi sa lalabas pa ng bansa, tas babalik. Diretsyo na. You can imagine the effect of that, right? You not be competing with so many emails going out and coming in. That's one. The number two, yung paggamit ng TV white space. Laki kaya nung frequency spectrum na po yung dyan mo. And so we can actually deploy in the places where it is not economically feasible for our ISPs to go. So those two things pa lang, nung nag-compute kami, ang dami na talagang pwedeng gawin dun sa mga lalagay natin mga barangay sa class 3, 4, 5, and 6 municipalities. So that's how we're addressing the problem. But, the reason why we have slow internet is more regulatory in nature than because of technology. And when I say regulatory, you understand already what I mean, right? I don't need to elaborate. You understand? Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, other questions? Um, we we'll go to the Any more? Help us ask me this. So with that, I would like to thank our speaker, Dr. Reynolds. Thank you. Closing remarks? None other than the director of the church. So, thank you very much.
again, thank you very much for being part of this Distinguished Alumni Series talk. Uh, Gem has been a role model for many of us. As you know, she is third, no? So, she retired sa Ripoli Eye. So, naging very influential siya sa mga buhay ng mga family members na nandito ngayon, including me. Actually, siya yung isa sa mga, ah, siya yung the chair nung nahayon ako as faculty na uh, EE, tama, Ripoli Department para at the time. And, I think marami rin nag-PhD sa amin. It's one of the reasons is because of her. So, we really look up to Ken on how we work right now, how we do our stuff. And she always serves as an inspiration to many of us. And as we go through our centennial year, yun din yung message naman na lagi namin sasabihin sa inyo. Huwag yung kalimutan na scholar kayo ng bayan. So yung service. So one of the few things that pwede siguro gawin ng people yung and the OST is yung mga summer immersion. One of the things that pwede siguro natin pag-alala is how we can have some of you guys work with mga DOST projects, especially kung gusto nyo mag-travel, mga probinsya. So maybe we can be part of that. And then yung call pa rin is we'd like to be partners with you kasi in the end, Triple EI won't reach kung ano man yung level niya ngayon without you, our students. So, dito kami, pero dahil sa inyo, we can reach higher, a higher level. So with that, I will be able to talk about the appreciation kay Mark Dev. Thank you very much for coming in.